In the year 1990, at the foot of the Mount Tampomas, near a small village north of Sumadang City, West Java, two college boys began a hike into the mountains with a plan to spend their weekend at their uncle's villa, located deep in the surrounding forest. A couple of hours into the hike, they arrived at the gate of an abandoned village. In order to get to the villa, they had to pass through a small and silent deserted area. Just outside the village, they were surprised to see a small coffee hawkers and decided to stop there and take a break. Where are you headed to? The owner asked. To Mount Tampoma, sir. My uncle's house is near the base of the mountain. Be careful while you're in the forest, boys. It's not a safe place to be, especially at night. But why? Just be careful, son, the man replied. Ask the forest spirit's permission every time you want to do anything. This is extremely important. We're from the city, sir. We don't believe in silly ancient superstitions, they quipped back. The owner, acknowledging their answer, simply said, Just be careful, okay? Realizing they had rested long enough, they stood up, thanked the owner, and carried on to the entrance of the forest. They ignored the warning of the coffee hawker, not wanting to entertain any superstition, and didn't ask permission before entering the forest, and continued to hike further and further into the dense growth beyond. Mount Tamponas has six posts between the base and the peak. Their uncle's villa was located not far past post two. Just before sunset, not far from post two, they spotted a brood of wild chickens happily grazing on the forest floor. They looked at each other and smiled, both thinking the same thing, to catch and kill the fattest one for dinner. They stopped and decided that this is where they would camp for the night. It started to get dark quickly, so they divided their duties. One collected wood and made a fire, and the other was to catch the wild chicken. They then helped each other to prepare the dinner, plucking its feathers and cleaning out its guts in a wash bowl, before seasoning the meat and roasting it in the fire. It was unfortunate that they forgot to throw away the entrails and clean the blood from the wash bowl, but even worse still, they had neglected to ask permission to kill and devour the wild chicken. After finishing the bird, they relaxed by the fire, played some music, and laughed at each other's stories long into the night. That was, until they started to smell something disgusting, a horrible stench was drifting their way. One asked the other, Did you throw away the blood and guts from the wash bowl? No, I didn't, he quickly replied. They froze where they sat when the sounds of the forest were disturbed by an eerie shrill. What the hell was that? One of them asked. They made their way over to the bowl, the source of the odor, and frighteningly, the sound became louder. Three terrifying creatures dressed from head to toe in white were gathered around the foul-smelling wash bowl. One of the creatures turned towards them, and stared right into their souls. The boys, managing to break free from the shock that consumed them, bolted away at a near superhuman pace, fueled by adrenaline and pure fear. They ran like the wind, but struggled to safely separate themselves as the creatures began to float after them with terrifying speed. Almost out of breath and about to give up, they realized that they were at post two, a small sanctuary for hikers. They quickly entered the hut and secured the door as fast as they could, trying desperately to catch their breath. Any thoughts of now being safe were quickly ripped away as the door continued to be beaten heavily from the outside. They could only stand still, frozen with fear just waiting for what was coming next.